Hey guys, welcome back again to Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy, where the proof is in the singing. I'm doing a series, and the series is called What Makes This Singer Great? And uh, before we get started, if you guys wouldn't mind, uh, please like and subscribe to my video and channel. That would be awesome. Don't forget to ring that bell uh, so that I can keep cool videos coming your way. And I have a singing course, and the course is called How to Sing Better Than Anyone Else. And we discuss and negotiate all these different styles and how to get uh, to these different places of greatness for singing. So uh, I decided to go ahead and take on Dimash. Now Dimash is just a wow enigma. I mean, this guy came out of nowhere. I think uh, with this title called What Makes This Singer Great, it's really what comes to mind when you think of this singer. So it's not just only a singing, but it could be a plethora of other different things surrounding uh, this artist. And in Dimash's case, um, there's a lot of things that come to mind. Of course, first, it's incredible range and dynamics, uh, just powerful voice, excellence, and I wanna talk about that in a second. But first, the coolest thing ever is that Dimash came from Kazakhstan, as you guys probably know. Uh, he didn't come from LA, he didn't come from New York, or Nashville, or Canada, or the UK, or Australia, or you know, whatever. He came from a pretty fairly remote place, and I was gonna say something about excellence. What's cool about excellence is, Excellence is revered around the world. So uh, if you're excellent at something, it doesn't matter where you come from, you're just excellent at it and the whole world has to acknowledge that. So that's really cool. Uh, that's one thing. The other thing that's really cool about Dimash is um, that comes to mind is he's an instrumentalist. And I think that says a lot about why he took his singing so seriously because you instrumentalists out there know what it really takes to get good at an instrument. Well, uh, this your voice is an instrument. And so what it's gonna take also to make you great as an instrumentalist with your voice. So there's that. So let's get back to what do I think about when I think about Dimash? Well, of course, I think about incredible range. Um, I think about uh, his uh, unbelievable stamina, that's awesome. His intonation and pitch is off the charts great. Um, I think that, you know, he's young, that's amazing. Um, he's able to incorporate the old bel canto, appoggio operatic style of singing into a lot of contemporary art, uh, which is really, really cool. Um, he's very versatile, uh, which is really, really awesome. And he's humble, you know, I've seen some interviews on this guy and he's not full of himself, so I love that. But I put together a little montage and I wanna discuss his actual vocal techniques along the way and his vocal athleticism. So with that said, I chose a piece that starts with him, with him playing an instrument first to show you that he's an instrumentalist and then move on to his singing. So here we go. Okay, now I'm gonna point out a couple things along the way. Now, I haven't actually seen this video other than just cursorily going through it. The first thing is, is that he's got a real sweet sensitivity. So he's kind of able to be real smooth and velvet-like on his vocals in his low end, though he can also get a really bright timbral sound too. So right now he's choosing to stay really smooth and he's able to kind of go in and out of almost like a mixed voice way down low. So you can't quite tell if it's all chest, there's some head in it, how much mix is involved. You can actually hear some mix in it. Uh, that's one thing. I noticed too, he messes with his earpiece a lot. So he must always have to kind of um, adjust. And this is a really cool professional aspect of him. He's very professional. So if I were to add that to the list, um, the professional aspect of when when to, you know when the compression is too much with his in-ear, when he takes it out, when he puts it back in. So he's constantly working that part of the stage and you know where he is in the stage, how much compression's built up into the head for how hard he's singing, how soft he's singing, and so forth. So that's certainly a, some very big aspects to this. So he's um, quite the performer in front of a a lot of people and does very well at it. Like I said, so he's obviously singing a different language. Uh, I don't know, you know, what language this is specifically, but um, 
I assume it's his native tongue maybe. But um, within most of uh, you know the Latin world and you know a lot of the Indo-European world, the Baltics, uh, obviously Italy, Spain, you know um, any Spanish, whatever, they get five vowel sounds. So what I mean by that is he's singing in bel canto, and bel canto gives you a, e, i, o, and u. So la, e, i, o. And you really have to negotiate all of your words and all your other sounds or you know, all your other um, word phrases around those five vowels because those are the five Italian or Latin vowels that are in bel canto, in opera. So he is, is staying pretty close to that and I noticed that he does that even within his pop stuff which keeps it a little bit on the operatic side so maybe some people don't like that as much. I happen to like opera a lot so I have a deep appreciation for that. But the vowels stay pretty covered in dark too so it's not like I it's pretty covered or dark, so so you can really be listening for that as you listen to his technique along the way because he relies on it um, almost 100%. Okay, one more thing. So he goes from this sort of little lyric tenor, real gentle, uh, almost Paul McCartney, you know, kind of lighter sort of sounding um, lower range stuff. And now he's breaking out his, his true tenor bel canto, uh, you know, big sound, so to speak. So here we go. So now I'm gonna back this up, we're breaking into another piece. I put together a few little pieces there. So if you guys follow along the way, so again, his vowel uh, modifications, the way he shapes his vowels within vocal track shaping is just awesome. Again, it's very operatic. Um, and then also his command of being able to have a lot of dynamic in his sound at any range of his voice. So why that's important is um, most tenors and belting tenors, um, they can belt out the high, you know, the B, um, in A sundorma, let's say, or the C, high C, or whatever, tenor high C, uh, C5 but um, what's kind of interesting is they don't necessarily have the command of coming back and uh, being really gentle and genteel and light on the sound like Dimash does he can actually at any spectrum of his, of his voice he can get louder or softer so the brother is just a phenomenally gifted guy and has worked very hard in his craft obviously so that's just fantastic here we go I mean the soprano range for the two He's able to go on up into the soprano range. And what he does is he takes his tenor uh, you know, abilities and then he's able to switch between tenor, soprano, tenor, soprano, right? Uh, kind of like the prayer by, you know, um, uh, Pome. So uh, anyway, uh, Marcelito. And what's interesting about that is, is that he's also able to sing not just in the tenor range, but in different types of tenor. He could be, you know, a, a, a big theatrical tenor. He could be a lyric tenor. He can go in and out of different tenor styles, but he can also do that in soprano styles as well. So right now you're going to hear him kind of go back and forth into the tessitura, uh, his, his range is a tessitura, is a soprano and, and tenor and soprano and tenor. Check this out. I'm going to back this up just a tiny bit and we're going to check it out. <laughs> Now that's, that takes on more of the flavor of like a coloratura a soprano um, that can sing really fast notes, kind of, you know, he can do that too. So he can kind of lay into, you know, a big, long, fat, huge sound, big sound uh, for a soprano. And then he can also back it off with a little new, a lot of the nuances of a coloratura. So here we go. <laughs> You hear those 
he's really keeping with that bel canto style. So he's really focusing on, again, on the very operatic style of singing. Now that's gonna be kind of interesting to see what happens when he tries to contemporize that sound as he starts to maturate uh, in his singing styles and wants to sing more in English. Because in English we have at least 16 different vowel sounds and that doesn't even include diphthongs and all the different uh, ways that we get to different vowels. So um, it'll be fascinating to watch how he matures over time um, to incorporate and include um, more contemporary vowels in the English language. Now, I cover all of this in my singing course called How to Sing Better Than Anyone Else, and uh, we negotiate how to go from bel canto and take that as the basis, um, as basic tenets of what it is I teach, and then we migrate that on into more contemporary English sounds. So, uh, let's continue. <laughs> Something else I think that makes uh, him great is his mystery. The guy is just kind of shrouded in mystery. Like, we don't really know much other than it's this kid from this kind of small, I guess it's not small, but you know, it's from Kazakhstan, small area, village, whatever. Uh, and uh, just out of nowhere, this guy explodes on the world scene, is just dominating planet Earth with his voice. That's number one. And number two, he's always got those kind of like, you know, I don't know, <laughs> uh, stage like, mystery eyes is the best way I can describe it. So he's very mysterious, which is also really cool. Now what's interesting, right there, he broke away from the bel canto mode. He went, and he stayed really bright on the sound. Um, that's not a bel canto thing. That's actually something to get up in a mask, which uh, is, a, is a contemporary way to get up in a mask. So if you notice, because he sang the bottom heavy, it would have been very hard for him to get up into a covered bel canto sound. Now, I know he can do it because I've heard him do it before, but um, in this case, he chose to stay really bright on the sound. That leads me to believe that when he does move into singing a lot more English speaking pieces, I know he's done a few already, uh, but that he will easily be able to transition from uh, predominantly using Apoggio, a bel canto, and then move on into uh, other vowel sounds in the English language, so. That was awesome. So those are the clips I prepared. Um, I've got a lot of these coming your way, guys. So um, if you wanna help me out and you wanna tell me who you think um, that I should uh, prepare to do uh, what makes this singer great, please list um, the singers that you'd like in the comments section, number one. Uh, number two, um, if you have something you'd like to contribute to uh, what you think makes Dimash great, I'd love to hear it. And again, it doesn't have to be um, you know just about his incredible singing prowess. It could be in uh, calisthenics. It can be what, what cool things he does in life. Life, um, what it is that you love about him or what comes to your mind when you think of Dimash. So stay tuned guys, we got another video coming your way. Check this out.